Hello, how's it going? So a quick one here today. I just wanted to show you what I bashed together today uh, out of, uh, well, this stuff. You may recognize this board right here. It's actually from the uh, Teletubby Tidal Wave. So uh, Teletubby Tidal Wave, something I've been building over on the Look Mum No Computer channel uh, for the Ramsgate Festival of Sound. And it's basically a bunch of cascading Teletubbies. And uh, the thing is I built this first board and I made a few mistakes and uh, I had to uh, turn it around and fix it and just make a few more. I had I needed five of these so they just I really wanted them to be proper and work well and this one wasn't fully working it needed a few modifications it's, it's a bit messy on the bottom if you've seen the video I'll link it below the Teletubby Tidal Wave number one you'll see what I mean well this uh, board well I just didn't know what to do with it and I didn't really want to just sit there wasted so I figured I needed to do something with it and then it struck me uh, what is on the front of this oh Oh, you're not even going to see this. I'm going to change the ca I'm going to change the camera angle. <laughs> There we go, that's better. So on the front of it right here is a really chunky uh, seven segment display. It's not any segment segment display. It's actually a plasma seven segment display. It's sort of in some ways, shape or form, it's, it's sort of like a Nixie seven segment display. It's like a Nixie tube that is a seven segment display. It's really, really quite odd. Mike's Electric Stuff, who has a website full of loads of electric stuff, uh, really interesting things, and he also does uh, uh, teardown videos on YouTube. To be honest, if you're watching this kind of video, you would have probably most definitely uh, either stumbled across his videos before or, you know, uh, watched uh, watches his videos regularly. I, I, for one, watch his videos and, yeah. Uh, and he popped around and was kind enough to drop off a few things that he had sitting about in boxes and stuff that he didn't have use for anymore. He covered this on his website and the link is below. And this is the Neo 8000M, NEO-8000M. It's like a neon plasma Nixie display thingamajiggy and it's truly fascinating and it is actually pretty big. I've never seen one before personally. I, I hadn't seen it on his site when I looked and I was, yeah, I was quite amazed when he popped it in my hand and went, have a look at this and it's like, whoa, this is amazing because, incredibly enough, it's about the same size as the uh, VFD one, the Russian VFD one that I built uh, a sort of display uh, thing for the museum a few uh, weeks ago um, when I saw it in initially on the Fran Lab channel. Uh, yeah, I built this and this is now running and being able to be played. You push a button and it rolls a dice and uh, you can use it. It's got a screensaver and stuff like that and it's, a, you know, you can play it over in this museum. It's not obsolete. Well, the plan with this one ever since a couple of weeks ago when uh, Mike came to the museum and dropped it off was always the plan of, uh, yeah, doing something very similar to this with it. However, I wasn't really sure what to do. And then when the Teletubby Tidal Wave uh, machine, uh, well, this wasn't needed anymore, I was like, actually, wait a second, this is perfect to actually power this thing because this has got seven segments plus a full stop. Well, this has got eight relays powered by a serial to shift register, meaning it cascades down like it's it's meant to ca make uh, Teletubbies do uh, waves, but right now it's not gonna do that. It's just turning these relays on one after the other via the shift register. Um, so let's have a closer look at what we've got before we uh, take another closer look at the uh, display. By the way, have a look at the bag. You can easily see where the actual, it's very similar, very similar to the VFD one. If you look on the back of the VFD one, it's got a very similar vibe like with the very thick traces that have been printed directly onto the rear glass. In fact, it's got a very similar agricultural kind of design. I say agricultural because, you know, it's plonked together, it works, and it's, you know, it's not not neat around the edges. Like, look, look, the, the glue on this, by the way, sorry, spray paint on the old fingers. Uh, this has got the same thing. The glass has been sandwiched together to the point that uh, then they've been glued together slightly wonky, so they don't even perfectly line up. Right up there, I think that is even a getter tray. I'm not sure, I might be wrong because there isn't actually any getter flashed out of it. So I'm not really sure, might be wrong there. Have a closer look at that. It definitely looks like a get getter pan. I'm sure, somebody, I'm sure somebody's gonna jump on the comments and be like, that's not that, it's this, it's this. It might even be the same as the adhesive that's right here that's, a, that's sticking the grid. If you look really closely, you can see that the actual anode grid, because this functions very similarly to a Nixie tube, is just, plonked on the front. In fact, it might even be um, printed on the front glass. I don't know, it's just a very, uh, you know, good way of making a display and it's so flat. Look how flat that is. That is flat 
as a pancake. So what we have got to go around here, I was saying this, so it's built on an MDF piece of MDF board. Um, it's got this, which is a 555 timer clock, and all this clock is doing is it's actually uh, sending a clock over to the serial to the shift register uh, chip. If you're not sure about this, then check out the Teletubby Tidal Wave video if you want to see more about this specific uh, circuit board. I won't touch on it massively right now. Uh, right here is a, it's a very big heat sink, heat sink, but it was the only one I had to hand. I tend to just bash things together, not because they're good and what they do, but morely because uh, just uh, I've got stuff sitting about. So this was sitting about. There's a bit of a um, black sprayed Vera board. Uh, you've got the power supply. You've got, a, you've got a power supply there. No, you've got the power input there. There's a 7805. And then what this does is it sends 5 volts out of this side, sends 5 volts to the clock and to this. And amazingly enough, with this heat sink, it's enough to power these five volt relays via the transistors right there, which power, which get triggered by the uh, serial to shield parallel shift register. <laughs> right here is a just a really uh, rubbish. I had it sitting about from a Nixie tube project. It's just a uh, takes 12 volts, sends about I don't know 130 to 150 volts out, maybe 180 volts somewhere around there. It's got a trim pot there, and I've been adjusting it. I haven't even looked at the voltage that's coming out of here, and I'm not going to. <laughs> so yeah, you can see it's all been bashed together relatively quickly. In fact, I put this together in a Patreon live stream earlier, I may have just mentioned that, and because there were a few issues that I came across, which I don't think I'm going to fully talk about right now because it's going to involve like doing loads of cuts, I've, in, I've, in, I've linked the live stream below. It, I don't do that all the time, but I just, I think it's worth linking it because there were a couple of problems. Basically, um, this was seeming to send out a little bit of a surge or noise on the ground, which caused the serial to shift register to serial to parallel shift register to kind of uh, crash and it kind of just stopped and stuff here and there well I ended up having to, thanks to a couple of help from a couple of patrons um, who uh, suggested a few things uh, particularly Dave from Tim of Software uh, time of software, sorry, uh, I, we ended up uh, going for, he suggested to re, um, isolate the grounds, but I had already built it this way, it just didn't seem to make sense, but then after messing around with a few different values of current limiting resistors on the um, grey wires right here, which are actually the cathodes that go to the uh, different um, different outputs, the different sev segments on the uh, display, well, it's not crashing anymore. So we've got 3K free uh, current limiting resistors, so what we got, is we got whatever 150 180 volts coming out of here it goes to the outside two uh, pins these are the ones that connect directly to this mesh so it's use it's exactly the same pretty much function wise as a Nixie tube and in the middle are all of these other ones that are all connected via the relays to ground via the current uh, limiting resistor so basically I just waved the wander I waved it around at the front trying to figure out what's going on after that plonked it together and bish bosh bash it sort of works so yeah it's, if you check out the live stream if you want to see uh, me chatting a bit more about it there's a bit of a faff here and there and sorry for the noise in the background there's the 3d printer anyway i'll take a breath at one point soon um so yeah amazingly very similar size to this uh, i find it quite amazing but without further ado i'm sure you're waiting quite patiently to for me to turn it on so let's um Let's turn it on. By the way, there's a wire, da there's a button here dangling out. The reason why this is dangling away is because this is gonna be in a display cabinet in the museum, and this is gonna be poking through the front so people can push the arcade button on the front and control this, and we can see how, what it does, what it does. Let's turn it on. You can see it makes that absolutely beautiful Beautiful Nixie kind of Nixie tube kind of orange. Uh, you can see the uh, the clock speed ticking there. The clock speed won't be adjustable from the front. The reason being is if you make it too slow, it's not super obvious the function of it. I just want to make it a simple function. It will be an illuminated um, arcade button anyway. Let's send one back down. So that's all it does. It just cascades down much like the te the Teletubby tidal wave. You can see it's running down the relays. You get a lovely noise. And the great thing is, is because it's a serial to parallel shift register, well, you can keep on adding bits. If you keep your finger down, you can turn them all on at once. I have found, amazingly enough, if you turn them all on at once, 
Oh, it did light up, but sometimes the full stop doesn't actually light up. The reason why is because this uh, needs a little bit more voltage uh, to turn on than to maintain its light, like Nixie tubes. And I found that this rubbish uh, power supply doesn't really do the job, but who cares, whatever, it works enough. And sometimes this is the last one to turn on. The voltage drops just enough for this not to actually turn on. Uh, well, I'll try and make it happen. There we go, it hasn't turned off. Uh, it hasn't turned on. Now when I turn, the first time I turn one of these off, the voltage drops just enough to turn this on. So uh, when the first one, whichever one it is, turns off, this turns on. You see? And then that lights up quite a bit. It seems to be the brightest shining one. Dave, uh, time of software Dave on the live stream mentioned that because it's smaller, it might need a bit more of a current limiting resistor. However, we've got this voltage problem, so not gonna bother. I'm just gonna roll with this. It's good enough. Who really cares? And look how beautiful that is. Oh my God, it's lovely. Sometimes I think it is crashing, but I'm not that bothered. It does the job and it just looks really cool. Oh, I could just sit and watch this forever. So yeah, this will be displayed in the museum so you can play it. It will be in the display case and that is slowly filling up with more and more different weird types of displays. And thanks a lot, uh, Mike's Electric Stuff, for dropping this off because I haven't heard of this before. Also, check out Mike's website because there's a load of different displays and loads of different interesting things and teardowns and things. He's dropped off a number of interesting things we'll be looking at. If you want to see what else he dropped off, I've actually uploaded a few images onto the museum's Instagram uh, of all the different things that he sent over. Uh, he sent over this small neon laser and I managed to electrocute myself with it. That wasn't very pleasant, but we'll, we'll have a look at that as well. And all this and that, uh, by the way, the museum is open this Sunday. However, unfortunately, it's sold out. I might add a couple more tickets. However, we are experimenting with increasing the capacity a little bit from last time, but we'll see. And uh, yeah, yeah. But by the way, there's a load of other dates right up to the end of September. There are dates you can get tickets to come to this museum is not obsolete. And by the way, every weekend, every week, there's something new that's added. For instance, this week, it's this random MDF board with loads of uh, wires on it. So if you want to see how I built this, check out the live stream below. I've been looking at no computer. If you want to see more builders live streams and stuff like that, then go and check out the Patreon because needless to say, that also supports projects like this and the museum and stuff like that it's very much appreciated because it just means that we can put more funky displays and stuff because people have been pretty surprised by the museum which i'm quite pleased about so yeah anyway uh, have a lovely time Woo!